Hi, everybody. Welcome to our conversations with Calvin. We, the species, uh, because I'm into this chronological thing, uh, it's May 25th. This interview will probably be seen the week after Memorial Day. Uh, and I'm with Derek Reynolds uh, from Wichita, Kansas. But before uh, we start chatting with Derek, uh, a couple of things in my monologue which I do now, I, I like to call it a, a Johnny Carson type monologue. That's what I call it. Uh, first, uh, how I came to Derek. Uh, and, and I'm always amazed uh, and, and I marvel uh, at the exigencies uh, of the universe, how people are put together. And, and uh, a couple of months ago, I, I had met Jared Spence uh, and Jarrett uh, is a journalist, and I'm always drawn to journalists because I'm a journalist of sorts. And Jarrett has, a, a, among other things, an, an NBA uh, podcast, and, and I kind of like the NBA. So we kind of met, and and, uh, uh, and we bonded, and boom, 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 I, I interviewed Jarrett. And, and Jarrett had also interviewed Derek. So there's the, the connection and Derek and I kind of hooked up. Uh, he reached out and, and I reached back uh, and, and here we are. The other uh, thing I, uh, and, and this is gonna, you know, I, I uh, have strived uh, when I began this channel and, and the whole mantra of my doing this channel, which started in September uh, and continues to grow uh, is to find really interesting people. Um, and, and it's not as if if Oprah or George Clooney or Jay-Z wanted to come on my channel, I would welcome them to come on. But uh, to me, there's, there's so many interesting people here. In, in, uh, that, uh, in, and that's why I'm with Derek. Uh, what an interesting story. Uh, so the other uh, part of my monologue is uh, I ask everybody to do me a favor and, and subscribe to the channel. And that's how we grow and, and, and that's how the interviews grow, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. And the other part uh, of my uh, monologue and the other part is I never do commercials, but I am going to mention quickly three, three uh, people whom I've interviewed recently. They've written books, Donald James Manners. Uh, Donald was with NASA for 35 years. Uh, and then I interviewed uh, Wajib uh, Hassan, who wrote a book, uh, The Struggles for World, The Struggle for World uh, Sanity. Uh, and Wajib has quite an interesting journey from Pakistan to England to America to California, where he did stand up comedy and other things, so interesting guy. And then the other day, I interviewed Casey Reche, who wrote uh, her first children's book, I'm the Boss of Me. So um, now that I've gotten the commercials, and I don't do real commercials, I, I wanted to formally introduce Derek Reynolds. Uh, uh, Derek, uh, how about if we start with a little bit, you're a Philly guy. And yeah. And talk about a little bit your your journey from Philly, you know, out to the Midwest. Oh uh, well, thanks for having me on first. And um, around time when I got about 23, 24 years old, I started wanting to, I say, experience something different. I wanted to change my scenery. Um, I just, I just wanted to change my surroundings and do something different. So I stumbled across um, Job Corps. I had been new about Job Corps. I had already heard about it. I had knew a few people who had went, but I had never thought of going mm -hmm. myself. So once I stumbled across it again, I, I figured I might as well look at it because I don't, you know, it ain't, there ain't nothing to lose, so I might as well look at it. And I went on, I went online and looked it up. And I scheduled an appointment, and I went and talked to the guy, and, you know, it looked good. So I went ahead and took the opportunity, and I went to Kentucky, uh, Simpsonville, Kentucky, at the Whitney M. Young Job Corps Center, 
Mm-hmm. And um, I learned welding, and it was a, a very probably one of the best decisions I ever made. That's great. By the way, I I almost forgot uh, in, in 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 setting you up and in introducing. We're really uh, once we get done with some of the preliminaries with Derek's journey. Derek is the founder of Huggadad Foundation, uh, Huggadad.com, uh, uh, which is what we're really going to be talking about. So I wanted to make sure I showed that. Um, so you, you learned uh, you, you learned welding, and and then you're out uh, in the Midwest, uh, and somehow you wind up in Texas, and you're learning railroading. If you want to talk yeah. about that. Well, uh, I went to Job Corps. I started learning welding. And as time went on, I got closer to finishing. I started having to decide what I wanted to do. Whether I wanted to go back to Philly and work in welding or whether I wanted to stay in Kentucky. Those was uh, my two options at the, at the time. And I was kind of leaning towards staying in Kentucky because I really like Louisville. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a Muhammad Ali fan, and I just like the city. So I was really considering staying. And one day they had us come to this, to this, um, it's like their little boardroom where they have little meetings. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy talking about going to advanced training, advanced training for hard trades. You know, you could learn to work on the railroads. And that intrigued me a lot. So I jumped on it and, you know, I made sure I was, I was good to go. I made sure it was, um, I made sure I was going to, I, I made sure that it was going to be good for me. It was going to be profitable for me to go down there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it turned out really well. I went down there, I spent about six months there wow. and learned how to work on the railroad. And I got a job on uh, BNSF. Railway, one of the top railways railroads uh, in the country. You, um, when we when we zoomed uh, a week or so ago, just to kind of get to know each other, you you you, you mentioned something to me. I got a kick out of it. You know, you were driving a locomotive. Yeah. The power. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, how I started off, um, my first job, I was was in Wichita, Kansas. That's why I'm here now. Well, that's how I started out here. Um, I was working on track maintenance, and we just repaired tracks. Um, I learned how to drive a CDL truck, a, a long 40-foot, you know, really big truck. We used to carry rails, and, you know, it was, a, it was a very heavy, dangerous job. But if you know how to do it safe, right? if you go there and you pay attention, you learn the job right, then, you know, Chances are you'll be safe, okay. but um, yeah, we um, I learned a lot about um, you know, just breaking down rails, repairing rails, repairing ties, um, just safe passage of trains, and it was it was cool. And then I learned how to uh, drive the rail, drive the uh, locomotives. I actually um, we went to Texas. I moved to Texas, uh -huh. and um, I was I was driving the locomotives. We was I was doing light work on them. I wasn't. You know, one of the better mechanics, you know, some guys know how to do, you know, a whole lot. You know, they really know how to get an engine and really work on it. Mm -hmm. I was more towards the, the basic stuff. Right. But uh, it was, it was, it was uh, very new to drive locomotives. Mm -hmm. And I think the most I ever wow. drove was about seven, seven, seven locomotives coupled at one time. Wow. I mean, yeah. the, the power. Uh, um at your hands moving you know uh yeah and, um yeah I, I derailed one time too wow that's so cool yeah you know what I, I wanted uh i was going to save this to the end but i before we talk about the birth of hug a dad uh, i i did want if, if you want to say a few words we're also talking to Derek reynolds who is running currently for city council of wichita kansas if you want to just say about the experience and maybe why you decided to run um yeah 
um, when you you just told me that it was like wow i um i it's funny i i looked it up on linkedin i was checking you out making sure i have all my notes and stuff and and there i see city council so um why'd you decide to 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 run what motivated you well, what motivated me to run? What motivated me to run for city council was I initially I started. You know, I was I was I've been dealing with the family law system for a few years now. Right. So eventually, I started feeling like, okay, well, maybe if I contact some uh, some of my local elected leaders or something like that, you know, maybe I can get somebody. I could talk to somebody. Maybe we can. You know, maybe they'll go talk to the governor, or maybe they'll pass pass my messages along, or you know, something like that. Maybe mm -hmm. somebody help me get to where I need to go. And I contacted multiple city council people, members. I contacted uh, mayors, things like that, different politicians, different influences, and a lot of people really weren't interested in dealing with, you know, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to fight for. Okay. So so I just felt like. You know what are what are these people elected what are these people leaders for and how many other people have they turned away because you know maybe right. it's not best for interest for their career to right. talk about this topic so that's, that's that's one of the reasons why i just decided to run that is a noble uh, um, that is a noble amazing undertaking to run for city council so um and I, I just think that's, I just think that's wonderful. Something I can only dream of doing. I would never would, but it's a great thing, Derek. So, the essence of why we're here is to talk about Hug a Dad. Uh, so, how did Hug a Dad start? Hug a Dad started, as I said, um, I started having issues with the family law system. I, let me see, how can I start this? Okay, so me and my son's mother, we we weren't, we had begun to, our relationship began to be, be rocky. We had mm -hmm. broke up, you know, things happened. And um, I was trying to, you know, because she was pregnant at the time. So from the beginning, I was trying to keep a, keep a close contact with her because, I knew she was pregnant with my child. I didn't know what I was having at the time. So she wasn't really interested in keeping that contact with me. So I just had to, you know, I was dealing with that. I was trying to find a way to where we can keep in close contact. And she was not having it. I went through every every measure that I could think of. And it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. So he was born. I didn't know he was born. Eventually, he um, he was two months old, and one day I just tried to call her, and she didn't answer, but she wound up calling me back the next day. And he was two months old. It was, um, I think it was Easter, Easter day, and uh, Easter Sunday. And, you know, from then on, I just started, you know, we, we I started creating that conversation, and then I made my way up there to see him. I was living in Texas. Mm -hmm. She was in Kansas. I made my way up there to see him. And I just kept, you know, coming back. And even though it was kind of rough, you know, it was a supervised visit. I was in her family's house. Nobody in the house liked me. So it was, you know, tough. It was tense. They, you know, used to say um, weird things to me and try to give me weird commands, try to tell me I had to put down my son while he was sleeping and stuff like that. And that was just an awful, awful experience. So just going through the family law system, going to court, me consistently, you know, trying to be the one to create healthy co-parenting, mm -hmm. you know, with my son's mother and then her and then her rejecting me and then me going to court and bringing this, like, look at these text messages, look at these messages. You see me, I'm trying to be friends. I'm trying to you know, you know, make it conducive to my son. And she's just rejecting me at every step. And nobody is concerned about it. Nobody wants to talk about it. You know, they assaulted me. Um, I got pepper sprayed 
by her mother, by, by my son's grandmother for not giving up my hotel room number. And we went to court over that and nobody, you know, see, saw anything wrong with it. It was just, it just, I'm consistently coming to court and they're consistently doing whatever they want to do. Here I am just trying to be a father to my son, just trying to spend time with him. And, you know, I got to fight to be his emergency contact at the doctor's office. Wow. You know, I got to fight to have my last name put on to wow. his last name. Wow. You know, I got to fight to just to see him. So, you know, that's that's what made Hug a Dad start because I just What's was feeling energy? some type of way. Yeah, just the energy. And I just mm -hmm. wanted to put it into something positive. So I just started writing down how I was feeling and it just turned into an organization. Okay. Um, and folks should... Uh, the easiest right now is huggadad.com, Huggadad Foundation to take a yeah. picture. And that'll be on, on the bottom of the screen. So uh, if I said, say a few words about the joys uh, and challenges of fatherhood, would you want to say a few words about that? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, there are plenty of joys. Um, just watching him do things. And it's like, Sometimes I watch him do stuff and I feel like, oh, wow, I remember doing that. I wonder if I was doing that when I was three or four, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be things that I've forgotten about and he'll do them. And I'll be like, man, I, I remember doing that. And, you know, it's just, it's just amazing to just have him sitting here watching cartoons that, you know, I grew up watching and seeing how he reacts to certain things. And, you know, it's just, it's just great to be there to watch him grow. You know, like I can remember when he was just a little baby, like when, you know, I was holding his bottle and now he's, you know, talking, even sometimes talking back and, you know, telling me to leave him alone. You know, it's just, it's, you know, it's a small, it's a small amount of growth, but it's big to me because, sure. you know, I just never, it's just, it's just crazy. It's different to, experience it firsthand mm -hmm. when you watch it you know you watch it from somebody else and i just had a joy just you know watching him laugh and watching him play and you know learning what type of superheroes he like and just learning his interests it's just it's been great but um the challenges i would just say challenges are just you know doing it and you know just winging it you know like at this point right now for me, it's like what I do for my son is just the stuff that I wish I had. You know, not knowing if it's right or wrong, it's just, you know, what I wish I had. What I, what I felt like would have made me happy. Or, you know, what I felt like would have made me feel more confident in myself. So that's what that's what I just do with my son is just, and, and that's the challenge, just, just being confident that you're doing the right thing and uh, just never giving up. Never giving up. Never, Never give, give up. up. Never give up. Um, when I uh, I've spent a, I've spent a, a, a good deal of time uh, on on your website and, and um, you, you have some interesting programs. Uh, I'll I won't go through all of them, but uh, I'll ask you to talk about a couple of them. There there. Um, uh, in Hug a Dad, you, you have something called career imagination. What is that? Career imagination is the idea to dream big, to just to daydream, to, to have an imagination, to think outside the box of what type of career you could possibly do, not just your, your normal, you know, and you come outside and you walk on the avenue and you see all the stores on the avenue and you think, you know, that's that's what type of job you're going to have. When really there's a lot of cool, interesting jobs that people could do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't know that you can make a lot of money just off doing your hobbies. You know, like Calvin Schwartz is sitting here. He enjoys talking to people. And, you know, now he has a channel with a bunch of views. He's getting to do something that he enjoys to do. 
And, you know, you wouldn't have probably known maybe a few years ago that you could enjoy it this much or build it this much. So we just want to show people or show children, you know, for the most part that there are, there, there are plenty of ways to make money, especially if you're a young teen and, you know, things might be difficult for you right now. I would just say what Career Imagination is telling you to just stay on track, try to find you something to do that's positive, and it will work out in the end because there is a lot out there that you could be doing to make a lot of money. That's Take great. care of yourself. I think that's great. And, and you know, you mentioned me in this channel. I, and if you would have said to me a year ago, I'd be on a YouTube channel interviewing and chatting with people all over the country. I said, were you kidding me? So it's out there. And, 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 you know, if you explore and if you have imagination and, and things keep evolving. Um, so that's, that's what happened to me. I never, never uh, expected. Uh, and actually I never expected any of this. I never expected to be a journalist. And I started. Well, that's the same. That's the same with me. I never expected to, you know, drive a locomotive and right. run a yard, but. Right. But because I was open-minded to what someone was trying to tell me, you know, I went out there and I did it and I got that experience. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Um, uh, also, uh, part of the programs you have at Hug a Dad, uh, you have something called Family Repair. That's correct. Chat, can you um, talk a little bit about that too? Family repair is the idea that there are plenty of the relationships that end over senseless things. You know, people in relationships over things that really could be worked out, maybe if they knew how to work them out. I know me now, as an older adult, I know that my patience is a lot better than it was when I was younger. So I'm more inclined to put up with certain things or talk through certain things than I was when I was younger. So what I want to tell people is if you have, what the program is telling people is if you have children, you have to realize that you need to find a way, you know, we don't want nobody to stay together if they're unhappy, but let's try to, let's try to work out these issues, these, especially these small issues that could be worked out. And, you know, for example, that's like, if I never knew how to be a husband because I never seen it. And, you know, my girlfriend never knew how to be a wife because she never seen it. Then we'll, we'll have a bad relationship, but it might just be if we had some counseling or if we learned how to talk to our issues, you know, things might be better. So it's, it's just, there's a lot of small issues mm -hmm. that turn into big things. And family repair is just saying, you know, for the father, let's say maybe the father doesn't know how to manage money, or maybe the father doesn't know how to, you know, um, be a family man or something like that. We believe some of those issues are small and they can be worked out. And if we can get some counselors on board, some therapists and things like that, we can find out different ways how to save these relationships instead of going to family law, who's just going to cause a separation. Right. Okay. Uh, one other thing I picked up um, from from Hug a Dad uh, and some of your programs, uh, you call it Dads on the Job. What is that about? Dads on the Job is a program that I would like to implement to just teach fathers certain things, small things, tedious things that sometimes get you tripped up things that i've had to learn you know like in job corps we learned when you're going on the railroad not to run your mouth too much about how you know how to do this or that because then people will try to find something that you can't do and that you know that might turn out bad so we just want to teach people how to go into workplaces or you know business or whatever whatever it may be just try to help influence people how to do these things correctly, how to do these things, you know, in a profitable way, in a way that will 
um, service them and their family. Dads on the job is going to show you, you know, etiquette. It's like when I was in my second job corps, we used to go through a uh, interview. We used to go through a mock interview process, and it would be a panel style interview. So we would get questions from different types of people. Some people are more hostile than others. Some people are more passive, and it just brings you up and down, and it sharpens you up. And I think that would be a great way to um, sharpen fathers up. And I hope they even take this program into um, my local jails and, you know, jails all over the place because then we could have um, inmates coming home and, you know, they be sharp and ready to, you know, pr proceed on with life. Yes. So much has to be done. I'm not an expert. So much has to be done with that. Uh, I, I, from from a distance, I observe the, the Women's Health Institute here in New Jersey uh, has a program of trying to help women who are coming out of prison with all kinds of giving them the skills and the talents and and the know how to make a success. So what you're trying to do is so needed. Uh, I'm going to go off topic a second. I, I forewarned you, uh, Derek. So yeah. I'm going off topic, I'm going to ask you a Calvin you question. A uh, and uh, it's a one word answer, basically, or two or three. But um, so here it, here it goes. Uh, I like this question. Uh, excluding family or friends, uh, somebody living or dead you'd like to spend the day with. Well, actually, you know what? I think I even know the answer. Um, I've never done this before. I'm, I'm going to answer before you answer, and and that's how well I know you. So uh, you can you can add on to this, but so so excluding family or friends, somebody living and dead you'd like to spend a day with, and 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 I know the answer. This is like um, this is like wild. It's Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, he would definitely he would definitely be he would he would be at the top of the list. I would, I would probably, I would probably definitely choose him, yeah. just because I respect him a lot. I respect his mind, just the the will, the strength. I mean, yeah, he was a great guy. Seemed to be a great guy. By the way, he was. Uh, I'm not just saying it because you're there, but he uh, was truly one of my heroes. I marveled at Muhammad Ali. You know what I watch uh, often? Because uh, I'm a big fan of Billy Crystal. And, and uh, at Muhammad Ali's funeral, Billy Crystal, the comedian, did like a 15-minute eulogy that was hysterically funny because Billy Crystal used to uh, imitate Muhammad Ali and Howard Cosell, the sportscaster. When yeah. Muhammad, when Muhammad uh, Ali was starting, when he, when, he, when he changed his name from Cassius, Clay to Muhammad Ali, there was only one sportscaster who accepted that, and that was Howard Cosell, and he called him Muhammad Ali because he wanted to be called that. So that that yeah. began a great friendship with. Um, but anyway, uh, so this, this first time I ever answered the question uh, when I asked it um, because I'm getting to know you. So moving along back um kind of winding down um what would you like to see hug a dad foundation become um i would like to see the hug a dad foundation just become just become an organization that people recognize as grassroots um, true to our mission, really invested in our communities as to bringing fatherhood to the forefront because you cannot build any community with broken family. You ain't going to have nothing. So I just want people, you know, I would want people to know or I would want Hug a Dad to be viewed as just that organization that has always been there to bring fathers back into the picture to create healthy relationships mm -hmm. between fathers and children and even between co-parents. 
because that's what it's all about. And that's how we create strong generations. That's how we create strong people. So incisive. So incisive. Yep. It's, it, I, I, what a great, what a great goal. Um, really, um, you you also. Uh, by the way, uh, I, I show this again uh, to everybody. Um, uh, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of logos in my day, and I'm not just saying this because you're here. But I, I looked at this logo. Um, it's great. I mean, it just Thank you. it it really is great. It just tells a wonderful story. How did this? Uh, where and how did this come into your consciousness? Uh, well, I think uh, last summer. I was just starting to think of, like I said, like I just started writing down stuff. So what I would do is I would try to talk to like people in the news and stuff like that. And they would always say like, well, you know, a lot of people go through this. You don't have no organization or nothing. So I said, okay, well then that's when I started writing and then it all, it all just came together. Okay. So I'm like, I need a logo. And I just started thinking of like different logos of fathers, maybe, you know, tossing their children up in the air or hugging their children and things like that. So I went on Instagram and I just started looking at, you know, people who do cartoons online and things like that. And I met with this, I met with this guy online and I just told him what I wanted. And the logo actually didn't come out the way I told him to do it, but it came out better. So <laughs> really, I got to thank him mostly oh, because he, he, he didn't do it the way I told him to do it, but it came out better. Oh, it's great. Um, um, I, I, you know, I, 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 by the way, uh, we should uh, tell folks uh, out there a couple of things when they go to the, when they go to huggadad.com, Huggadad Foundation, uh, there's a little place where well, a people could donate because it's a foundation, and that's yeah. important. Um, people can donate, and it's one hell of a cause. Uh, and number two, there's a little place where people can shop, maybe buy a T-shirt with this yeah. logo, and I think that's great. Uh, uh, I really do. Um, uh, so, and we're working on some. Uh, we're working on some more. Some more shirts. Okay. We're working on some cups and stuff like that. So we try. I mean, the world. We're trying, to, we're, trying to, we're trying to populate people's houses with our logo. Exactly. It, it's like I said. It's 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 a great logo. I love it. Um, so uh, winding down. Um, by the way, um, uh, uh, somewhere in my notes, uh, I wanted to. Uh, it was. Was it really hard? I mean, you're a Philly guy, and you know Philly is Philly. And and was it particularly hard to, to kind of relocate out to the Midwest? Um, did you? Adjust uh, it was easily? difficult. No, I, I didn't adjust easily. It was difficult. Okay. Um. Yeah, it was it was difficult. Um, adjusting to the slang, uh -huh. adjusting to. Um, just the way people were, like I said, I didn't know anybody, you know, um, you, you can feel people's energy. Like people had, people had different energy than what I was used to. And not that it was bad. It was just difficult for me to read at the time. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I wound up, you know, making some great, great lifelong friends, people from, um, you know, like, it, and it's a, it's a weird experience because you're, you're, you're living on a dorm and I guess it's kind of like college and you know like me I'm from Philly I got one roommate from Selma Alabama wow. another roommate from from Chattanooga Tennessee another roommate from you know Louisville Kentucky or whatever and we all bond over being in this place and trying to make something better of ourselves and I'm still friends with a lot of those people you know, some of those people I haven't seen in six, seven years, and I call them on the phone right now, and we laugh like That's I great. seen them yesterday. That's great. So, yeah. So, I mean, it was it was difficult adjusting, but once I did, 
I really enjoyed where I was at. And I just want to tell you one thing really quick. You know, it was difficult for me at first when I first got there and I used to talk to this pastor. I wanted to leave. I wanted to quit. And he told me that, um, you know, God moved me out to the Midwest. You know, he moved me from the hustling bus, the fast city, big city, to the slow country to tell me to slow down and to think before I act. And that's what I did. And I stayed and, you know, it turned out great for me. So yeah. I've always appreciated that guy for, for right. sitting there, you know, talking to me like that. Hey, I think your journey, uh, you know, from Philly out there uh, in, in, in creating and founding Hug a Dad and, and now running city council, it's a pretty nice journey. Really, Thank you. great, it's a great journey. So you you have a so come, maybe the last thing I, I, I want to ask just to because uh, uh, it fascinates me. You're interested in uh, in, in journalism and poetry and, and doing some writing, uh, correct? Yeah, um, I've actually been writing. Um, I've been working on some things. I you know I really enjoy poetry. I really enjoy you know coming up with stories, storytelling, and okay. trying to write articles to express my opinion on how I feel. And I'm looking forward to um, publishing some articles and publishing some writing. So if anyone watching is interested, you know, I feel like uh, you won't be disappointed. That's great. And you know what, when we go off air, um, We'll talk about that. We're almost going to go off air because uh, oh, we, okay. we've we've um, we've done a nice little we've done a nice little chat and and truly, Derek, your your journey's been really so fascinating, uh, and that's why we're here. And 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 I want to thank you uh, for your time and for your graciousness. Uh, and uh, formally and officially, I'm, I'm kind of a funny guy. Um, loyalty is a wonderful word. And now that we're friends and, and we've done stuff together and spent time together, uh, my sense of loyalty says, when you ever want to come back here, when you're on the city council or whatever, uh, you want to sit and rap and, and chat and whatever, uh, I'm always here. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that formally. I would love to have you come back and we can just kind of chat. And um, It's funny, we didn't talk about the Eagles. Um, um, I'm teasing you. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, I again, I, I want to thank you so much for your time. And, and you know what? I'm wishing you good luck in the primary and good luck on election day. And, and, and definitely good luck with hug it there because i i believe in this this is critical and essential and and uh again i thank you so much for being here and uh if i may just say one thing yes just about my city council run i just would like to tell people you know if you're watching this and you may be on the fence you don't like politicians they say the same thing which is true a lot of politicians do say the same things a lot of people have the same message. I have a different message. Um, you're not going to find a lot of people who are going to talk to you about father's rights and bringing fatherhood in the community. And the reason why they're not going to talk to you about it is because it might do too much good and that might mess up their little slush fund or whatever they got going on. But, you know, you see a lot of politicians and a lot of them like to talk about or brag about how they chase other people around to chase people down to talk about things people run from issues and then you see the ones who who act like they chase everybody they start to run from issues as well well if you vote for me i'm not going to run for any issue run from any issues i don't have any issues to run from so you know take a chance look me up watch my interviews read about me i think you'll see the difference that's great i i wish you all kinds of success and luck. I, I don't know anybody on the city council, so you'll be my first. First. So be well. I thank you. Uh, and to be continued. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, sir. Thank you.